Hello and greetings. This is Tony Hang with PDOC Broadcast, PDOC Films, presenting another series of the Omaha Grain Belt Breeders Edition. Today we will have the opportunity to talk to Florin Hendricks of Holland. We were going to learn more about who he is, his family of birds, his racing history, and what he has brought to us to the United States. We're going to get the opportunity to see him as well this weekend as we are going to go live at the Omaha Grain Belt this weekend. So please mark it down on your calendar to follow us. And at this time, please subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to go like us on Facebook and join us as a friend as we continue to travel around the world to bring the best racing pigeons and other fanciers to your listening ear. We want to give everybody a warm welcome. And once again, let's get Hendrix on the line to get this show on the road. Okay, hello, Florin. Are you there? Yes, of course. I'm here. Hello. Hello, Florin. Hey, welcome to podcast. Uh, before we get yes. started, I just want to thank you for your time. It's a, a great opportunity, especially from me all the way in the United States, talking to you from Holland. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, I live in the Netherlands. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Can you tell me about mm -hmm. uh, what the city where you live and a little bit about uh, 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 your background there and your uh, city there? Yes, we live in a small village in the southern part of the Netherlands. It's uh, short to Germany and Belgium. So it's a small village and a few big cities in neighbor. Amazing. Now, uh, Florin, uh, can, can you explain to me? Now, I'm going to start getting deep into this conversation because there's a lot that I would like to ask about you and we can explain to the world about uh, who Florin is. Can you explain yes. to me about how you got started into racing pigeons and how, how you first got into that and maybe you can talk about some of your first birds. Maybe they are still a part of who you are today. Can you explain to me about that? Yes, I started uh, 19 years ago with racing pigeons. But uh, my dad had already for all his life racing pigeons and my grandfather's too. But when I was 16 years old, I got a little bit interested in racing pigeon. And uh, yes, it could always be better. And then we start some investments for pigeon. The first pigeon come from my uncle. It was uh, the little 273. It was uh, the first stock breeder we had. And soon out, out of him, we breed uh, Popeye. This was also his son and the new stock breeder. Now in the pigeon we own for now, the little 273 and the Popeye are still inside these birds. Yes. So so basically, this is like a three-generation thing. You have grandpa, father, and yes. son. Is that correct? Yes, I think for 100 years now. It is a generation there. So racing pigeon for 100 years. Wow. Yeah. Now, now all yeah. these birds, do they kind of go back to one backbone? Uh, do you guys share like the same family of birds in three generations, or how does that work? Yes, I think the, the pre-generation is the little 73 and the Popeye. And then we start crossing these birds to Gabi van den Abele birds, uh, Koopman birds, Hoymans birds. In the f early years, some Jensen birds over the Borgmans bros. This is the the old line. So that's yeah. so it all kind of originates to this Popeye bird. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. We have many good champions out of him. Now nowadays, uh, we have the father of our national hurry, and you see still the. The stock breeders are inside. Now, ex explain what made Popeye so different than the rest. Was it was it his racing career? Was it just straight away he was just a great breeder? Or what made Popeye special? Yeah, his father was a, a super racer. He won three first prizes, eight second prizes, a few third prizes. And then we put him to breeding loft. And his son Popeye was a late bred youngster of 2002. And he never raised, but he was a beautiful pigeon, beautiful eyes, beautiful wings. And my father said, uh, we put him to breeding loft. Okay. So, and then we start breeding in 2003, and directly the first youngsters out of him were from, from outstanding class. In 2004, we bred the favorite. He was three times the fastest of uh, total release from almost 20,000 birds. 20,000 pigeons? Wow. Okay. Yes. Three times in a row, he was the fastest, so... And as young birds, and also against old birds, yeah, he was uh, very good. Wow, that's now that's that's a lot of competition. When you say yes. twenty thousand pigeons, are are you talking about just your area, or is this kind of like the Barcelona where you you race all over, or how does that work? No, the the Barcelona race is an international race, mm -hmm. 
on with that number of birds, but it's uh, province of Limburg. Okay. The, the Netherlands is uh, split in a few parts, and this is a part of the Netherlands. Now, I, speaking of racing, can I touch a little bit of base on uh, racing? Is that okay? Yes, of course. Now, do you fly systems for old birds and young birds? Example, for old birds, do you do like double widowhood? For young birds, do you do darkening? What is your system that you fly with your birds? Well, the system is we, as yearling and old birds, we only race with cocks. So classic widowhood, the hens always stay at home. They are waiting for their cocks. Okay. And uh, they breed early in January. Then the training starts around the house. Then the training starts uh, on road training. And first weekend of April, the race is started till the first weekend of August. And then the, the distance is always grow every week. Okay. So this is the season for all birds. And the young birds, we start then breeding first January. We pair with the breeders and racers and we breed from them. And then the young survey start normally early July. Okay. Then they will be raised till September last. Yeah. Now Late September. Yeah. For the young bird series, how far do you guys go as a distance? Uh, up to 400 kilometers. Okay, 400 kilometers. Now, for, for your young bird team, do you train hard? Are you a, a training kind of guy? Like, do you train on a weekly basis? Do you, do you run, are you all natural? Or do you run a uh, darkening system on the young birds? Yes, but all depends on time. But the darkening system is always from March till June, they will be darkened. Okay. From 6 p.m. in the evening till 8 a.m. in the morning. So around 14 hours of darkness. Okay. Yes, and this is from you know, April, March, April to June, 20 of June. That is the longest day. Okay. Now, speaking of uh, racing, can you tell us about your combine? Like, who do you, in, in your club and combine that you guys fly with, how many fanciers are you competing against on a weekly basis for old birds and young birds? Well, up to 1,600 in the province of Limburg. Yes. In so we have different levels of racing, but the biggest level is the province, Limburg. And then we race 1,600 maximum. Okay. Mem members and members. Now so, I, so that's that's in, quite that's quite some competition. We're we're not talking small scale. We're talking big scale. Yes, it's a uh, it are many. It's also big competition, strong competition. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's apart from thirty kilometers by eighty kilometers. Okay. Yeah. Now, so the spread is normally. Some of the recent accomplishments that you've had, can you tell us a little bit about some of the recent success? I, I know there's a lot. You, I, I've been following you, and your record is amazing. But just a short uh, glimpse, can you just tell us some of the achievements your team has accomplished in the last year or so? Yes, we, we got many ace pigeon in a provincial level. I think for the, in the last 15 years, I think six ace pigeons first, many second and third places. Also in the national championships, we achieved many top results in 2008, 9, 10. Overall, we were the best one day long distance racer from the Netherlands. In 2016, we were first national champion loft, one day long distance, so middle distance. And this year, we are again fourth national champion of the Netherlands. Congratulations! That's I, I know. I know it must be really hard to achieve. It's it's hard to win ace pigeon there. Is that correct? Yeah, of course, you need good pigeon. You need a good family. So it's not only built in one year. It's worked for many years. Uh, what, what we do around here is a lot on a smaller scale. We're competing with just a, a thousand or two thousand. But what you got going on there? I mean, we're talking thousands of pigeons. Is that correct? Yes, correct, correct. When, uh, for sure, when we race a national race, uh, one or two times a year, we had a liberation all Holland. Then we talk about uh, 30,000 pigeons. It depends the time of the year. When it's early in the year, we have more pigeons. When it's a little bit late in the season, we have around that 30,000 pigeons for national liberation. Yes. Of course, and only wow. when it's when this number is at the end of the season, only the good pigeons will basket. The bad pigeons are, are at home. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, that's correct, because it is... Uh, yeah. They, they've already gone through, so they already weeded all the ones that couldn't make it, and now these are the top competitors at the end. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's true. 
Now, Florent, I, I spoke to Joe just not long ago, and he mentioned to me that uh, you know he's, he's built a relationship with you for a long time, but he mentioned yes. one thing that was really unique. is He said that you are a very tough grader. Okay? Can you tell me about what you look for for a breeder? How much time do you give a bird, like a breeder, uh, before you let them go? Can you tell me about your process? Uh, the process is all we breed our breeders ourselves, normally late brats in summer, and we keep them for our, our own stock. Or we buy some breeders from different fanciers, and it has to be a brother or sister to a very good pigeon or a good son or daughter, but always related to the best pigeon in the loft or children from the best pigeon in the loft. So that's the shortest way to build up your, your loft, only need the best ones. Uh, of course, you have to look a little bit how is the shape in hand, a good balance, a good fan bones, and a nice head looking. He have to be smart looking. So, so you're looking for personality yeah. as well, then personality of the birds. Of course, of course, you see it in a loft. How a pigeon is, uh, how we live in this loft. How is, uh, how I say it is. Yeah. Now you said that uh, you you breed around late and then you keep those as stock birds. So, so you're basically you're telling me that you put all your breeders together and you do one last round of breeding and then you, from there you select some birds and you keep those as stock birds. Is that is that what you're saying? Us like that, yes. But we we see it in the nest when we see in in August a, a very nice cock in the nest from a good racer or good uh, breeding pigeon of bear. Then we, we keep it for our own. Okay. We, 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 the first and second round of breeding is for our racing loft. Mm -hmm. And the third, fourth, fifth is normally for, for sale, but all the good ones and the bad ones. Mm -hmm. And then from the last round is normally the fifth or the sixth is for ourselves. Now, how do you? How much time do you give a breeder? So, do you do you give like uh, your your stock breads? Do you give them one or two years to breed, and then if yes, they don't do yes, nothing, up to two three years. Two three years. Okay. Uh, yes, it depends on the first year. When you import the pigeon, you have to wean up to one year. You have to be fully mounted in your loft and wean in your loft. Then you give good pigeon before when he not feel home, he not can give good birds. I think. Okay, so so you're basically saying that when you import a bird or bring one in, you believe yes. that the bird must stay with you at least one year so it fully molts and acclimates into your system before yes, it produces yes, of well. Course. Yeah. Okay, very and, nice. And get all treatments, vaccinations. So for your for your breeders, do you usually run a system before you start breeding them? Do you have a medication system or are you natural or more not all natural. They they get many natural products, but before the mounting, so August, September, they get the vaccination again, paratyphus and herpes. Mm -hmm. And in end of October, we start the cure for paratyphus, salmonella, with uh, Batril and androfloxacin. And at the last days, we vaccine them with a uh, not alive vaccination. Okay, okay. Yes. That's all what the breeders get on the the first round of eggs from the breeders go to normally to the yearling cocks in the race team. They breed them, and the the second round of eggs the breeders breed himself. And on that eggs they get a trichocore for seven days. That's all what they get in one year. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm I'm so excited. I know we could probably talk about this for a long time about your system and whatnot. Which you know, it's going to be a great opportunity because we get to we're going to see you live in Omaha Grain Belt. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Next weekend I will be there. I fly tomorrow morning to the United States. It's my first time in the United States, so I'm very excited to to see it. <laughs> and meet the people. <laughs> oh, so so Florida, I gotta ask you: when you get to the United States, what's some that's what what's one thing you you have to do first before you get when you get here? You want to try the food, or what? What is it you want to see? Of course, I see always the good food, the steaks <laughs> and the burgers. <laughs> okay, okay. So it looks like we're gonna have some fun. I can't wait to see you. We're gonna I'm gonna be flying out there soon, and uh, when we do, I'm gonna we, we hope to do a live broadcast on uh, on P Doc Films of you. Um, and hopefully mm -hmm. we can get some viewers online to maybe even ask you some questions. But yeah, it would be fine. It can be. 
cool. And I understand that on Saturday we're going to do a seminar. You're going to kind of talk about your breeding and one not two on uh, Saturday. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I, I get a shuttle for the weekend. We, we're going to talk about pigeons, so the seminar. Great. And uh, there will be an auction. So it's a nice weekend. I think time will go fast. Yeah. Meet new people, meet new friends. Man, yes. when you're when you're having a lot of fun, time does go fast. <laughs> yes, that's important. Always like that. Well, Florin. Uh, now, lastly, let's talk about birds. Your birds that you're offering at the grain belt. I know uh, yes. you 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 learned about this grain belt thing about a year ago. So you're preparing all these birds and you're sending them here. Can you tell yes. us about the selection that you have for us? Can you tell us uh, what birds you have to offer and talk a little bit about their family history or background? Can you do that for me? Yes, of course. We offer some pigeons from the third round. We put them in aviary and before they go in quarantine, I select some nice one out. They were pretty young when I sent, so we could not check all quality. But I sent some more. Then they could select out uh, the bad ones in the United States. Uh, the family is from the Copeman line, the Garby line, the Popeye line. It's all from the base of our loft. So we sent some from Bonohari, paired with the eye catcher hand of Kirk. She is also one of the best breeders in our loft. We sent some of the brothers of Kleine Gerard, so the best Koopman cock we have. They are already third to MPO winners and uh, the multiple first prize winners. We sent some from the best son of King Kong, the 764. We sent some from the sisters of Bonohari, the 609 and 608. These are very good breeders. The 608 is already done this year to the first and third provincial ace pigeon in the one day long distance. And we sent one brother of the national ace pigeon 2019 national hurry. Wow. I think this is the absolutely highlight in auction. Wow. Now, that, yes. is that the first one ever offered from that bird then? What is that Can one of the? Repeat? Is that one of the first uh, birds that you are offering off of that national bird? Uh, yes, it's uh, no, it's not of directly from the ace pigeon. It's a full brother or sister. I don't know the oh, sex wow. now, but I, I send in May. But it was, when I send it was a an, an looking amazing quality in hand, and it's a very good breeding pair. We have the national ace pigeon, national Howie, and we have some good brothers in the race team. So this is one of the leading pairs in our loft. Yeah. Wow, that's so, that's one heck of a selection there. Everything from your top breeders, full sibling yes. to your ace pigeon, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We also sent we have a very good brother to our twenty sixteen second national ace pigeon, the Donkey Hari. We sent also two of them to the grain belt. Okay. He was he was paired to a direct coatman hand from Zena. So I think the bios the buyers have enough choice to to look for good birds and quality. I think they will be a su success with it. It's it's amazing to hear so, that uh, you you sent basically everything that was the backbone of your breeding team here. This is your yes, third round, true. so you selected the best that you can offer. And yes. uh, now now uh, when when you're here, can can their viewers, if they have any questions, can they contact you through Facebook? Maybe send you a message about some of the birds. Is that okay? Oh. Of course, no problem. It's always nice. Beautiful. So you guys have also heard uh, on, on here that if you guys have any questions, you guys can contact Florin on Facebook. You can message him. He's very fast to respond. And keep in mind that there is a time difference. Is that correct? From uh, from What time is it right there right now in uh, Holland? It's now 12.30 in the afternoon. So from central time, we are about uh, 6, 5.30 here. So keep in mind, there is some time difference when you guys are chatting with Florin. And give him a uh, little time. Seven and hours. Seven time hours. <laughs> <laughs> and he will respond as soon as he can. But uh, Florin, it's, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I learned a lot in this short period of time. I hope to, when yeah. I see you, we're going to try to do another live. But this time, we're going to do a live video chat with you uh, when I get there yes. in, uh, in Omaha. But uh, good, Florin, good, uh, good. and now keep in mind, everybody, all his birds are posted currently right now on newipigeon.com. They're also posted on the Omaha Green Belt website. All his pedigrees and pictures of the birds are available. And you'll get the chance to handle them during the auction day and see Florin this weekend at the Omaha Green Belt. 
And uh, Florin, I just want to thank you for your time. I'm going to let you go. Um, I appreciate yes, it so you much. Too. Thanks a lot for your interview. Yes, most definitely. We're going to get uh, a little bit deeper when I see you in real life. So, <laughs> Of course we can. We see you on Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Fantastic. Well, Florin, you have yes. a good time and I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you guys have it. This is Florin Hendricks from Holland. And we were, had the opportunity to interview him live but they're basically the day right before he flies to America for his first time. I'm so excited to meet him and give him a uh, warm welcome to the USA. Now, guys, you have heard it here that uh, you guys can, if there's any questions about his birds or breeding line or history, you may contact him via Facebook. Uh, he is very, very fast at responding. Send him a message to ask about birds. But you can view all this information on the www.omahagrainbelt.com. You can also view his information on neweyepigeon.com as well under the Grain Belt category to view all his birds. Once again, it's going to be very exciting. This weekend, he's going to be live. So if there's any questions, please, please shoot them our way. Um, he will also be available there, so you can give a nice, warm conversation and a welcome to him. But keep in mind that I will also be there to video all the birds and show the auction live. So if there's any questions, feel free to contact me, and I can ask him directly. My goal is that on that day, we were going to do a live interview with him. So please, please subscribe to our channel. And as we continue to do more videos and more work, you can follow me as well as I travel to do all these interviews. My goal is to be at Omaha Grain Belt and do a live interview with him. And once I do this live interview, you guys can chime in and ask any questions. But please, set your calendar for the Omaha Grain Belt this weekend. My name is Tony, signing off with PDOC Films and PDOC Broadcast. Thank you and have a great day.